This is the first of a series of videos that I have done with my friend and Q&I expert Josh Moring. But let me start first with an introduction of what it's Q&I and what's the value that it brings. Uh, so we all have seen call detail builds in which you get uh, the initial number where you make the call, the call you know, you, you call to, the day, the time, the minutes, and some data about it. And that analogy from the telephone network into the data network, uh, we can actually see it here in the network activity tab. When you go there in QReader, you see information like the source IP, destination IP, the port being used, and the amount of data that's important. If you want to see whether a lot of data went out or not. Uh, and, and, and that is actually very useful. From, from the port itself, Curita can infer uh, many things. So it would be trivial for you to see whether a server is using encryption because, well, if it's using port 22 or 443, then that, that is it. Uh, you can say that this is DNS if it uses port 53 and so on and so forth. Th that is actually uh, very useful and there are many rules in Curator that work based on that simple uh, net flows and where do they come from well they typically come from uh, routers and switches that have that information and they they can send that to curator that's the most basic level of uh, networking flows uh, you also can detect things like port scanning how does curator knows that this is a port scanning well because the information here on the flows on the port it is, is, is you know jumps around when the adversary is trying to find what ports are open, what port responds uh, to your request. So again, useful stuff, and that's the most basic type of flows. But we will see in Q&I, uh, as we progress in this uh, tutorial, that uh, all the data from Q&I would also be shown in here. More on that later. And I forgot to mention that these are just the default columns that I have in my system. There are more. Uh, and when you add Q&I, there are far many more uh, fields that will contain information useful for detecting abnormal things and attacks. Going back to our uh, telephone network analogy, one thing that is obvious is that in my detailed call, there's no information on what was said. Okay, uh, obviously, uh, you need to tap the, the call, get a warrant, and all that. Right? Uh, but, but there's a lot of good evidence in here. You, you cannot say that you didn't talk to that person because here's the information about you calling to his cell phone all these many times, all these, you know, all these many days, all that. So that, that is good evidence, but again, no information on, on the details of the call. And the reason for that is that uh, what we are collecting here it's information about the packet header. So if we were to look at data packet going, there are some headers that basically indicate that the TCP IP source destination and, and port and stuff, and, and that's where uh, the routers uh, get that information. But then there is a whole bunch of details that is containing what is called a payload and that's what you don't get visibility into standard flows so if you want to get visibility in the flows and the, of the um, on the payload and that's where q and i comes in you experience a problem uh, the same way that in the in a if you are tapping on a telephone call uh, there can be multiple languages that are used on that uh, conversation, right? So in order for you to intercept successfully the call and get the details, uh, you need to understand, for example, English. If the call is in English or French, you get the picture, right? 
And to make a loose analogy, because the analogy is far from being dead on, when you are inspecting traffic, say that you are poking at a, at a traffic, you need to understand different protocols. HTTP, DNS, IMAP, and I'm, I'm talking about understanding what's in the payload for those because one thing is, well, I, I can see in the headers that you're using port 53, that should be DNS, but I do not know the DNS request, the DNS response, the details on that call. So, and that's why QNI contains some protocol inspectors. I'm going to show you some of them in a minute. Uh, and that allows it to determine not just the type of traffic and the details of the traffic, but they go beyond just that. So for example, on the protocol inspectors, you get you know these type of things, and they're, they're more than, than, than just that. But you can also detect other things like, for example, let me go here on application detection because I'm going to show you a concrete example of that. Uh, and uh, you can detect what type of applications are actually being used. Are you using Google Talk? Yeah, well, the inspector can determine that. Uh, this is more important. Again, an another example I, I will show on this. Uh, is this a PDF, a portable document uh, uh, format document? Is it an XML? Is this an Office document? Uh, you know, all those details. And that can be very useful when you are performing investigation. And there's also domains inspector. Did you go to MySpace? Did you go to Facebook and, and, and stuff like that, right? So you have the capability in QNI of detecting all those uh, things. Before I forget, there's also another thing that QNI does. If we look here, all the rules that Curator has for hash, uh, very many of them are from QNI. Notice that this is a Q and I, and and you are not going to get the hashes of a file in the header, nor on the payload. The software, the, um, and the accompanying hardware, has to compute whenever it sees a file hash. It's going to do the, the SHA or MD5 hash of it, and and then it sends it as a standard flow into Curator in one of those fields, and that's how Q and I can detect. Let's say that I have a reference. So let's actually take a look at any one of these. Uh, that th this particular case, the file hash that I compute when I see it on the network matches one that is on a table, a reference set that uh, typically these are maintained via a stick taxi and, and kept uh, up to date. So then this is how we can detect malicious artifacts. A bad DLL, you know, coming from the solar wind attack. Is this neat? Well, how do we determine that? Well, by that that is the mechanism. But back on the on on the protocol and the protocol inspector, let me show you a concrete example. So one of the things that bad bad guys do often is that they hide an executable which should be the file termination should be .exe, for example, if it's in Windows, and, and they put a .pdf to, to high detection. But in reality, when you open that PDF, you're going to be executing a program, a malicious program, rather than opening a, a PDF document. How does Curita detect those type of things? Let me show you a rule that does that. If I look for all the rules that have the word QNI in it, you're going to find, I'm going to be looking for one specifically that, uh, let me look for file extension and search for that. And here is the one I want to highlight. And there are very many, but this is an example. As you can read here, this is performing what I just said before it is. It's going to be looking at the the protocol inspector understand, oh, this is, the, this is the nature of this particular file. And then it's going to perform a search and see, well, does, does this type matches the extension that it should be? And we can even see, no need to understand these, but basically this is looking at the, into the, the actual file name until the dot and then gets the extension, gets everything in lowercase. And looking to this reference map, that see sees whether there is a match. I mean, is this is this an executable? And then 
because the extension that I see is a PDF and the protocol inspector says otherwise. What is it that the protocol is, uh, inspector is saying? And then we, we can even go into the reference data management app and look into that uh, reference map. We go here on map of sets. This is not this one, but this is the reference map that is actually looking and you see the different terminations in here. So a, a quick example of the capabilities and the things that QNI is doing. We're going to end the part one of the video right here, but there's far many more things uh, to come in the subsequent videos.